can't take it anymore. Where was I? As part of the build of my hydraulic shop press, I need a way to power the hydraulic pump. And I decided to go with the biggest motor that I really had that could probably power it, and that would be a treadmill motor. And I needed a pulley to be able to bridge the motor to the hydraulic pump. So this is what I came up with. And what I'm concentrating on the small series is uh, the making of this, this pulley you see centered here in the middle of the screen. Well, in order to make a part, we need to kind of define what the part is going to be. The part's going to be a pulley. That means it's probably going to be round. So let's throw something round up there. That will be the outline of the pulley. Ta-da! The cross section is going to be approximately, oh, around an inch and a quarter to uh, maybe 1.4, we'll say, since I want to leave room to machine off any roughness of the casting. Since I am using the lost foam process, the foam itself, no matter how cleanly you cut it, is going to have a rough surface finish because you're going to have all these uh, open cells along the side of the foam. And any casting material used like a, a green sand or foundry sand or plaster or whatever is all going to get into these little nooks and crannies and grooves. So plan on having a rough finish when you get done using a lost foam without uh, doing anything else to it. So this would be the cross section of the part, just to give you an idea. Here we go. Make them aluminish uh, colored. So what else do we need? We need uh, we need hubs. We need an axle. Well, we don't need the axle in this part, but let's just grab a something we can make an axle out of here. Grab that. That'll be our axle. And since I don't want to have to uh, remachine and polish off the center section when I mess up this pulley, because I know I probably will, and to allow it to be changed easier, this is where the hubs are going to come in play. So let's make a couple of hubs. These hubs are going to consist of a washer. That's going to be bored out to fit around a piece of one inch round stock. And the there we go. Let's change that just a little bit. Weld these particular parts together, and we'll give them a color. So this side of the hub will be where the set screws are. Uh, this side of the washer will be the uh, register to keep uh, to keep everything nice and lined. And this inner piece here will also act as a register because the pulley itself will be bored out to this diameter which is a lot bigger than a half inch and a lot easier for me to bore with the tools I have. So that's going to sit on the pulley oh, approximately like that. And just for completeness, let's have another one. And there we have that. So we can now get rid of some more material because the hubs are going to be taking its place. I'm going to grab another circle and go uh, the inside bore of that to allow for the hubs. And now we're getting a little bit closer to the finished product. So what else has to be taken into consideration before I try to get rid of some of this extra material? Because that is a big chunk of aluminum. The, uh, the flanges on the hubs. Okay, those are going to be about a little over half inch and a half, excuse me. So let's throw a couple of, or one of those in there. So this area here is going to get unmolested. Uh, it's just going to get faced off, but I need that material there to put screws through the flange 
and into the pulley. Uh, what else? Well, we got a rim. The outside diameter here, this is where the belt is going to ride on, and I need material there that can be removed to make the uh, grooves for the pulley and whatever side shoulders I need. So I got to take that into consideration. So let's grab another circle here. Uh, I can probably get away with a little bit more. Yeah, something like that. So I'm going to lock those off so it ain't going to get messed with anymore, but I can still use them as, uh, as reference points and snap areas. So let's get rid of some material because I don't need all of that. And I was considering something like a round spoke. That I can take material off of. So in order to put the uh, circle where I want, I just want to bring in a guide here. And I'll bring in two, just for the hell of it. And I can throw my circle right onto the guide. And say something like that. Okay, now I'm going to want a bunch of these, so I'm going to drag its center point, excuse me, I'm going to drag the center point here, and this would allow this uh, piece here to be revolved around this particular point, and now I can make some copies. So let's say every 90 degrees, just to see what that looks like. Now, that's still going to leave a lot of material. So that ain't too cool. How about 45 degrees? Hmm. That looks doable. And it was probably a lot easier to machine than, than what I chose. But I want to take advantage of, uh, I'm going to be using the half-assed CNC I've got. Uh, connected to my machine to make something just a little more elaborate, I guess. So let's just get rid of these. I'm not going to use circles today. I chose instead to make square spokes. I don't know why. I guess just to see if I could. And that's what we wound up with. So here's a spoke. And I just basically did the same thing. I threw it against the piece. <laughs> and then I did that uh, same thing at a 45 uh, degree separation from each other and let's throw the center point where it's useful and put a bunch of those around so now I've got eight spokes of a roughly square configuration uh, just to try out uh, the machinery and that's pretty much what I wound up with so enough of this looking at the the doodah here, let's go over to actually making the foam. We've got a couple of A commands I gotta get rid of. Told to lead a little bit more on the outside. And I'm not really listening to me. Oh, because I didn't load the new program. Am I a dumbass or what? I'm still running off the old one. Fucking A. I had botched up on the machining 
of these two forms because when I did the uh, tool pass I didn't allow enough material uh, on the side I'd set it right to the lines so they didn't have enough material to be machined off for the rough surfaces and I went back and changed the g-code but being a stupid idiot I didn't load it into the machine I was still copying I just got ahead of myself I was still running off of the old g-code so uh, it's it been a long day that looks better. I want to look bigger on the outer diameter just so I'd have thicker sections for the metal to flow into and less chance of a void and uh, more material to clean up and get a smooth surface on so a little bit but it should be significant as far as the pouring so, I'm groovy with that okay throw off another one just one more to uh, stick the two pieces of foam together I'm just using some spray glue in a can uh, you know along the lines of 3M I believe they got 33 um, uh, Elmer's makes some craft glue and Loctite has one. If you don't want it to be a permanent bond, just spray one side, let it dry a little bit uh, until it's a little tacky, and it, it works out pretty good. It sticks down and allows me to uh, peel it off after I'm done.